God is in the business of changing lives. He loves you, too, he loves you but loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Our God is a God that has the best of intention for us. And he manifests it to us. Praise the Lord. God, he will take that which is broken and fix it. God specializes in, break, in, in fixing anything that is broken. He will take that anything that is bent and he will strengthen it out. He will take that which is shattered and he will put it back together. God is in the life-changing business. It is his nature. You may not be where you are, you may not be where you want to be, but my goodness, you are far from where you started from. And every day, you are moving closer. You are moving closer. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Let us put our hands together again for the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Our God is in the business of changing lives. He loves us just too much to leave us the way we are. And I pray for somebody here today that you will experience a makeover in Jesus' mighty name. Welcome to uh, brothers and sisters online. Welcome to those in the house. Everybody is looking gorgeous, looking amazing. There's something about coming into God's house. You get transformed. I'm not saying anyone is ugly or anything like that. I'm just saying there is transformation. Everybody is looking beautiful and amazing. Please put your hands together for yourself for being in God's presence today. Amen. Amen. So, I'm not Pastor Eddie. I think let's uh, uh, call that out uh, very quickly. So, Pastor Eddie, uh, Pastor Bola are senior pastors uh, in the wonderful city uh, of Lagos, Nigeria. Um, we've had two weddings um, in this house uh, last week in the country of Nigeria. God is doing amazing things in our midst. Two of our sisters got married last week. One of them is in my connect group. Not that I had anything to do with it, but just, you know, just saying one of them is in my connect group. And I've also seen uh, uh, Pastor Eddie is ministering in the Lagos Church this morning. I just caught a glimpse of that. So, you know, they've, they've gone for that. They're blessing uh, that city. And we pray that the Lord is taking them safely. He brings them back safely. Everybody who's traveled. I saw loads of pictures online. People snuck out to Nigeria, came back, did not take brethren along, did not invite us, nothing. It's all good. We were here, um, and somebody has to be here, obviously. Um, so uh, here we are. But, you know, amazing, amazing time to be in God's presence. But we're not alone. We are in, uh, in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord is here with us. The Holy Spirit is here with us, and you and I are here. Those of us online are here, and some of us will be watching on, on demand later on. And I'm sure we're going to have a great and amazing time in God's presence. Anyone believes that? We will have an amazing time in God's presence. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We thank you for the privilege to be in your presence this morning. Father, Lord God, we pray that you accept. Father, Lord God, this token. You accept us into your presence this morning. Father, Lord, as we go into a time of the word, we pray that you speak to us. We pray, Father, Lord God, there shall be deliverance. We pray, Father, Lord God, there shall be healing. We pray there shall be transformation, Father, Lord God. Your children have come to seek your face and to seek only you. Father, Lord God, we pray that you meet them at the point of their needs. There is a word that a man, that a woman, that a brother or a sister needs here today to transform their lives. Father, Lord God, they shall not miss that word. We come against distraction. Distraction is a tool of the enemy. Father, Lord God, when that word comes, they will not be distracted. When that word comes, Father, Lord God, they shall not miss it. Father, Lord, our coming here shall not be in vain today. For those of us who are online, for those of us who are watching on demand, that same grace be extended unto you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And God's people say? Amen. God's people say? Amen. Amen. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that he has great plans for us. He is able to do immeasurable more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work. Where? Within us. God's power is within us. God's power is within you. And I pray that that power is able to do that which you yourself cannot even begin to comprehend. So what is that thing 
that you've come here with? What is that thing that has been bothering you all year, all month, all week? God's power that is in you is able to shift that. I see God's power shifting something in someone's life this morning, in someone's life this week, because that power is in you already. He's able to do immeasurable more. And I've claimed it. I received that. And that shall be my testimony in Jesus' mighty name. I don't care what the chancellor has said. I don't care how many prime ministers we've had in the last, you know, 24 hours. God's word and his power is able to give us stability. He's able to do immeasurable more than you can think or imagine. So what? We just key. Where should we key into? God's power that is within us. So this month, uh, the month of October was declared to us by God's servants as the month of marvelous works. And we've been looking at the series um, in October, the teaching series called I Am Due a Makeover. So if you're, you know, you've missed a couple of services, if you've missed uh, some services this week uh, or this month, I don't know why, no excuses. So I'm just going to speak to those joining us uh, for the first time today, either online or uh, um, or in-house, just to give you a recap before we go into today's uh, message, because it's a continuation. So in the first week, we started teaching us um, about making hard choices. And we looked at why sometimes it appears to be so difficult to change bad behavior, to change, to transform. And one of the things that we looked at, the first thing was, Probably I should call somebody now to come and do a recap. Pastor Angela is so eager. Like, call me, call me, pick me, pick me. No, Pastor, we know you know everything, Pastor. <laughs> so the first one is, you know, Pastor told us that we've had some of these behaviors for so long. We've been lifting pens since when we were little, and that has followed us into the workplace. Or some people, not me. We've been doing some things for so long, and all of a sudden we're asking us to change. It's not possible. Pastor said some people identify with their flaws. So people will come to the table and say things like, you know I like my food. I went to the country of Nigeria, and this has nothing to do with the fact that I was in Nigeria. But we attended a wedding in Nigeria. I say appetizer, it was puff puff really. And it was like a basket, a little basket of 12. And there was this lady, so there was eight of us on the table. And this lady just, from the middle, she just pulled the old 12 puff puff to herself. Finished everything. And there were eight of us, appetizers for everybody, one person. Such a person, if you ask them afterwards, why did you do that? I love my food. Oh, I love Puff Puff so much. So pastor said some people identify with their flaws. Something they should be ashamed of becomes a, they introduce themselves by that thing. Our flaws pay off is another one. The gratification that we get sometimes makes us just so difficult. You know, you scam people out of their livelihood. You, you keep on doing it because, you know, you have money that's not yours and you defend it, you know, cost of living and all of that. You know, man needs to be smart, isn't it? No. And Satan fights it was the last one pastor told about. The, the enemy, his job is to kill, steal, destroy. He would fight it. He would fight it. Why is it the day that somebody says, come to me to church? That's the day your boiler breaks down. Why is it the day that your pastor says, come and take the service? I have no boiler in my house. Satan doesn't want me to be here today. So the people repairing it came at 6 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. So will you stay with us? I'm like, <laughs> you're on your own. So Satan will always fight. We will always fight and ensure that you remain where you are. So how do we overcome? We renew our minds. We embrace the truth. And where do we find the truth? In God's word. So please go back to that. I'm just giving a summary, really for those who are just joining us, to help him ease and flow into today's uh, um, sermon. So last week, P.E. taught powerfully on the power of God for change. No pun intended. It was a powerful, powerful message. He said we need God's power for makeover, for transformation. Nothing else, nothing more. God's power is the only thing that can give you a makeover. So my wife's nephew phoned me last week and said, Uncle Gay, Uncle Gay, I started a new business. So what do you do? He said, I now give people nice shape-ups and air cuts. I started that in uni. You know, you cut all these boring air cuts. I can help you with all this lovely stuff. Your hair is going to be nice, isn't it? So it's, um, 
um, what's it called, uh, uh, Black History Month. So I thought, I'll give a brother a chance. And said, okay, right, let's do it. He said, I'll give you a wicked shape up. That should have been my first clue. <laughs> a wicked shape up. So I said, come on Friday. He never showed up. Well, he came on Saturday, yesterday morning. So we started the whole thing. He had all his kit in his pocket. Sign number two. His new business. So we finished. He did everything. So I asked for the mirror. And I screamed. I said, Sammy, this side is gone in than this side. And he stood back. Now everyone is going to stare at me all through the service. So he looked at me and said, oh, 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 Uncle K, it's the shape of your head. He said, your head, the shape doesn't go round properly. Your, this side shoots in than that side. So it's not my fault. It's, it's, it's your, it's the, God's power is the only thing that can give you a complete makeover. Don't rely on any man. So look this way. Don't look. As I'll, I'll preach like this uh, uh, today. It's, it's the way we're going to do this. But look me, the, the camera on this side. God's power is all that we need for complete, proper makeover. So we looked at the three things God, God's power can accomplish. Number one, we said God's power can cancel your past. Look at Rahab from a prostitute into the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ from a prostitute. What is that thing that the enemy is holding you to ransom with? What have you done in your past? What kind of life have you lived? God's power can transform you. We said God's power can conquer problems. Minister Ayo was introducing the service uh, on Thursday. And he talked about the woman with the issue of blood. Pastors, fake pastors, I must say, priests and all of that, physicians. They've taken her money. But after 18 years, one day, she came in contact with God's power. And that issue dried up. I don't know about you. Whatever problem it is that you've come in with to this service, whatever it is that you've been battling with, that you, you know, people have scammed you left and right. You've done so many things, it's not shifting. By that power of the Most High God, who wiped away this woman's infirmity at just a touch, a tip of his garment, I pray that that power that is still alive today is able to conquer your problems in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, it's too small for the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord conquer our problems in Jesus' mighty name. And finally, God's power can change our personality. Jabez, he was born in sorrow and his mother named him Dust. But one day, he was tired of the way he was living and he cried out again. And again, God did what? God intervened by his power. What is it? What is it that is causing you sorrow? Is it your job? Whatever it is that people have started even calling you by that name. That guy that can never make it. You go into a WhatsApp group. Everybody leaves and they give you a bad name. By God's power that transforms things for Jabez. That same power is still resident. And it begins to turn around things for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So today, so that was just for those who um, were not here. If you were here and you wrote anything. Okay, go and watch the service. All our services are free. They are online, available. Nobody charges anything. So today we are looking at the man who changed. The man who changed. Like I said, you know, man could promise you that he could give you a makeover. Don't fall for it. I've learned the very hard way. But God is the only one who is able to give us that complete transformation. The rich fool, like the Bible in the Bible tells us, he experienced a little increase. He did not even know what to do with it. He started planning. When we experience this makeover, the, our, our, our father has told us that in this month, we're experiencing marvelous work, transformation. What do we do with it? After you've become transformed, what do we do? We, as brothers and sisters... In this assembly, in Christ, what is our role in even bringing transformation into people's lives? So that's one of the things we'll be looking at today. So we will be reading our Bibles. If you have your Bibles, let me see them, wave them, and um, you can turn it on as well as uh, Reverend Gavin will say. We'll be reading from the book of Acts uh, chapter 9, the New King James Version. 
Acts chapter 9 from verses 1 to 7. It's always amazing reading God's word. Acts chapter 9 from verses 1 to 7. Right, so we'll see a man who experienced transformation. I don't care how bad things look, you know, for you. I don't care how far it looks like you are past redemption. You are, you are, you are, you are finished. No, we're going to see how somebody who was gone way out there can experience transformation and a makeover. So this man was really, really due a makeover, right? We're all there. So Acts chapter 9 from verse 1 to 7 says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. He went himself. And verse 2 says, He asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus, so that if, if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, this guy did not discriminate. Equal, equal treatment for everybody. Whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. That just gave you sort of this gentleman's job description. He himself went on to talk about his life in Galatians, in, Philipp in, 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 in Philippians, about how he was zealous for the persecution of Christians. In fact, there's a, there's a guy named Stephen. When Stephen was being stoned to death, Saul was the one who looked after the coats, the jackets of all the people who were stoning this brother, this disciple. Okay, there's kids, and I can hear some kids crying. He, he supervised the execution. He, he helped them look after their things. That was the type of man we're dealing with. Just to give you a bit of context, I don't know who you threatened with murder before. I don't, you know, hopefully nobody here has, so I can stand somewhere else. But this was the type of man we were dealing with. He was out there to murder anybody following Christ, any disciple. So all of us here during the time of Saul, we would not have been saved. We would have had to pull five, six people outside to watch out for us. It tells, it tells us in that verse 1, he went to the high priest to ask for letters. They didn't even send for him. You know, I don't know if you've worked with people like that, especially people in HR, overzealous. <laughs> My sister is in HR and I know, you know, it's, it's, it's over, this, this guy, he had the passion, negative, wrong passion, but he was passionate about destroying Christians. No place in society for the people that follow. He called it a sect. So he asked them for letters, the chief priest, so he could bring them back to, back to Jerusalem where they will be dealt with. So verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus and suddenly, tell your neighbor, suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. The power of God. This is a man that you and I are probably thinking, how? Persecuting Christians, killing them, Binding them hand and foot, male, female, children. That was his mission. But suddenly, suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. I pray suddenly there will be illumination over everything in your life, contrary to God's plan for your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Verse 5. And he said, Who are you, Lord? I think that Lord part might have been Lord. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gold. So he, that Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Let's pause there for a minute. Lord, what do you want me to do? I personally believe that if you say Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you call yourself a Christian and you've not asked of the Lord this question, there is something you need to do. As soon as you get home today, Go to your creator. Go to your father. Ask him this question. 
Lord, what do you want me to do? Every morning before you step out, what is your assignment for me, Father, Lord God? At work, in everything that you do. One of our brothers was sharing a testimony um, last testimony Sunday. He said before he went contracting, he opened the pages of scripture to ask the Lord if this was what he wanted him to do. Is this what your plan? Is this your art for me? As believers, we cannot go into life without the answer to this question. I personally believe that Saul's attitude and this question was what saved him on this day. Because it could have been judgment. It was killing Christians. But let's see what this question opened up. So the second part of verse 6 says, um, So he said, Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. He asked the Lord a question, and the Lord did what? The Lord gave him an answer. He came with an attitude. He was trembling. He showed repentance. He showed realization of what he has done. And we've seen in the Bible where many times people were supposed to face judgment for the attitude in which they came with. You know, the prophet came to David and told him, there's a man in this city. He has done X, Y, Z with somebody else's wife and all of that. And we saw how David felt. And that was, you know, it, it, it impacts the decision that the Lord took. So, the question to you and I today is, what will you do for the Lord? Pastor keeps saying every time to us that this religion that we practice, it gives us responsibilities. We're asking for makeover. We're asking for transformation. We're asking for marvelous work. But what would you do for the Lord? Let's not be a gimme, gimme, gimme Christian. In my house, there's a lot of, I need this, daddy. I need this. But I'm also, I need you to tidy up. I need you to do this. My six-year-old is starting to wash plates. We need to, you know, it's, it's a joint uh, partnership thing. And very soon she'll start earning, you know, all of that. Already planning. But why do we think that when it comes to the things of the Lord, it is just he would have to do something? Lord, what would you want me to do? So P has made this quite easy for us to answer some of the things we could be doing for the Lord. And it's titled it Operation One Step. So very quickly, if we could just have um, that card up. Op Operation One Step. Some of the things we could do. So Saul, so, um, is it up? Okay, so one of the things Saul did is he got baptized. That's one of the things he did. Have you been baptized? What would you have me do, Lord? I'll just stand here because I can't see it. Can you still see me, Kalumi? Great stuff. So, attend Connect Group. Apostle, Apostle Saul, let's stay at Saul. Saul stayed with the brethren in Damascus. Started fellowshipping with them after he experienced the Creator. Be free from a bad habit. He stopped persecuting Christians. He stopped killing them. What a good bad habit to be free from. Pray more. He was found. He started praying continually. Give more. We're going to be giving our tithe and offering you know, very soon. Give more. Um, read the Bible consistently. Disciple one person. Share my Jesus story. Saul started telling everybody that would care to listen about that journey on the way to Damascus and that light that shone around him. So what will your be is the question today. You want to experience a makeover. But I throw a question at you, brothers and sisters, today. What would you do for the Lord? So, we saw what the Lord told our dear brother Saul. He asked him to go to the city and he will be told what he must do. How do you know what to do? How do we know that this is what I need to do for you, Lord? And it's very simple. It's all in the Bible, but we need to read it. And that's the truth of the matter. I don't know how else I can say this. We need to read that book. But I could help you today to give you some in insightful tips on how you could read the Bible more. 
the first thing to do is to really create a clear time and plan to seek to understand. This is quite to seek to understand, not just, you know, a quick, let me just read. You need to, to desire to seek to understand. And I think the only way I could illustrate that is through like the dating game. When you're dating, it's been a long time for me. When you're dating, it's a, you're trying, you're seeking to know this person more. Are they the one? Are they not the one? I mean, I, I, that's, that's what I did. I remember then, you know, when I met my wife now, I used to be on a network called Orange, and she had a, a T-Mobile. So she told me, for us to speak more, there's something called T-Mobile five-day pass. So we can talk from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock the next morning to get to know each other. Now I'm showing my age. So there isn't even T-Mobile anymore. <laughs> so that, that was it. So from about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, there's this romantic vibe about when the sun is gone in and all of that. Then we would speak. So I think after one hour, you cut the thing, you dial again, you do it, you dial again. It's like, yeah, right, okay, yeah, I'm in my room. Okay, so what are you watching? Uh, let me go watch it. And we just spend time, spend time talking rubbish away, wasting time. I mean, what, it would have been a tragedy if after all that we didn't get married. From 7, 8, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, are you still there? Uh, are you still there? Hello? Hello? Cut the phone. Call back. Were you sleeping? Yeah. Okay, let's carry on. But you spend, we need to create that time to hear, to seek, to understand God's word. Then when you get God's word, you need to meditate on it. You continue to go over it. As you are at work, I am blessed and highly favored. John, you know, John 1.1. 1, 1. You start, you go, ah, John, hey, is it John 2? John, you go back, you go check. As part of your day. Hey, Genesis, no, gen, no, Genesis, no, Genesis 3. No, Genesis, you go back. You could stay on that one until you get it. You've got your life ahead of you. But just read it. Then you need to delight in it. Be excited in it. Share it with people. Talk about it. You need to delight in God's word. And finally, you need to learn it by art. You need to know God's word. I was in the office um, one, one of these days last week. Um, and, you know, everybody, everybody was talking about the cost of living crisis and all of that. And somebody said, oh, we would not be able to pay our mortgages after a while, you know, all of this. And right there, God's word came to my mind. What you've put in, it was at that moment, and I said it out. And she said, ah, how, how did you know? I said, yeah, it's, a, it's a Bible scripture that came to my mind. And that's what she said, oh, you mean positive thinking. I said, no, 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 it's not positive affirmation. It is God's word that has come to my heart, not positive thinking. So that is how we read the Bible. So the second part of this Bible scripture I want to talk about is becoming an agent of change. So Saul experienced this light suddenly as we saw. So God did his part. But God also used a man here on earth to also do some of the makeover, transformation work in the life of Saul. And I really want us, brothers and sisters, to be really involved, to look out for one another, to make something of someone. The Lord is adding to, our, to his church every day. But not everybody who walks through that door has experienced makeover. Not everybody who walks through that door knows Christ. They are depending on us. They are waiting for us. Saul needed somebody. He thought he was doing the right thing, quite ironically. He actually thought he was doing the work of God. So we all need to be what I call change agents, to be used of God, used by the Lord. Our children are in there learning. Somebody is missing out on there, but being a role model for them in that room. NXL, pre all of that, name it. People are doing it. The sanitation team, what about transport? Somebody is driving around now, picking people to get them ready for second service. These are all change agents working around. People welcomed us. Make this place amazing for us. If the guy in the box gets angry now and turns on my microphone, that's it. 
Hello, Sam, in the box. Good morning. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 24 uh, to 25 says, And let us be concerned about one another to promote love and good works, not staying away from our meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other. And all the more, as all the more you see the day drawing near. I don't know about you. That day is drawing near. Look around at the world. Look at everything that is going on. That day is drawing near. And it is my prayer that on that final day, we are, none of us is missing in Jesus' mighty name. But we also need to ensure that our brothers and our sisters, Saul could have been left out. So I'll show you the life of somebody very quickly that I call a change agent in that same Acts chapter 9 from, from verse 10. And his name is Ananias. Ananias, the change agent. So from verse 10, he says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus. So that same city that Saul was going into to grab the men and the women and bring them back to Jerusalem dwelt this brother. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. When the Lord calls you, when the Lord sets an errand, an instruction before you, what would be your response? Lord, I'm really busy at the moment. You know that project is in its final stages. There's 2.4 million pounds involved at stake, which we wouldn't even see a quarter of it. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard about this man, how much harm he has done to the saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on his name. So what Ananias was doing here is like, Lord, just in case you don't know who you're sending me to. I'm not, here I am, Lord, but just as a, you know, maybe you, the page where all the stuff this guy has done, you've not gone to that page. This guy kills Christians. This guy even has been sent here to destroy. Just, just putting it out there, just letting you know. But the Lord said to him, go, for he's a chosen vessel of mine. Really? A murderer? That sister that we think doesn't dress correctly? That brother? That child? That man? That woman that we've written off in our hearts? That we think don't belong in the way? Those ones that we've used our own standards? I mean, Ananias was completely right in everything. I mean, he was talking fact, brothers and sisters. I, I will be saying the same thing to the Lord. Even exaggerate what he has done beyond that. But look at, is it not interesting how God actually saw Saul in his own way. And that is the way our Lord looks at you and I. He has a special, he's a father. He loves us so much. He sees us in a different light. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Whatever it is, wherever, whatever circumstance of life, wherever it is you find yourself, the Lord is always interceding for you. Making a case for you. Telling your father that you are coming home one day. You are coming on his side. So this is the Lord said to him. So go for he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias ended this conversation, ended the discussion. And he went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Everyone deserves to be helped. Everyone deserves to experience a makeover. And that journey, that process actually starts with you and I. It's not somebody else's responsibility. It's not Pastor Eddie's responsibility. God has done his own part. We need to be agents of change. We can't be part of a church and say we don't come to service. 
even online, you know, wherever we, we, we attend. Can't say we don't go to Bible study groups. We have to be involved. We can't be missing. Your testimonies, your earth, whatever it is, is needed at the table. Even you think it's not good enough. Somebody who was killing the brethren, God is still saying, he's welcome. He's welcome to the flock. To, to, to the, to the, to the flock. He's welcome. I need him. I need him. I need everybody. I need him. Ananias, you go because I need brother Saul. Can God depend on us? Can he use us to effect change? So five things just to look at very quickly of the life of Ananias. It was readily available. Mr. Ayo is starting to look at his clock. He's panicking and he's making me panic. So I'm going to just ignore him for... He cast his own sides and fear and worry away. He was affectionate. Look at the greeting. Brother Saul. That's how I'm greeted when I come in here. Tommy what gave me a lovely handshake this morning. He brought healing and restoration. He laid his hands on Saul. He said, receive your sight. Have the Holy Spirit. And he made a disciple for Jesus. He baptized him. He brought this guy into, the, into, God's, into God's house. So what should we do? So Saul is now transformed. Saul is now like you and I. He's now a brother. All things have passed away. All things are now new. What should you do after you've been transformed? The answer is very simple. You get transformed and you transform your community. Seriously. That is it. it, do, it there is no more to it. You get transformed and you pass it on to everybody around you. So let's look at what Saul did after he received his transformation. So from Acts 9, 20 to 22. So immediately, he preached Christ. Immediately, he knew about Christ. He started telling everybody about Christ. Some of us have been Christians since 1988. Nobody... Nobody has heard about the name of the Lord Jesus from our lips. For some people, it's 1960. Nobody has heard about the name of the Lord from your lips. We get to work, mm, gone. 21, then all you heard who were amazed, he caused the stare. We heard Reverend Gavin when he came, talking about don't be a dull, boring Christian. Go out there and shake things up. Stir up things in a good way. Oh, they will catch you and it's not me. Don't be a boring Christian. Shake things up. Talk about Christ. Our world needs it. Break the rules for Christ. For Christ. Don't wear balaclava and go to uh, Barclays and say, they say, break the rules for Christ. And 22, and Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus. Doing what? Proving that this Jesus he is the Christ. That's our job. That's our job. We go about proving. My whole life is about proving that Jesus is the Christ. I had an appraisal with my manager a few years ago. He said, you're excellent. You're amazing. You know, all of this. You're the best things in sliced bread. I said, to God be the glory. He said, uh-huh. No, you're a clever guy. No, I said, it's my Jesus. Jeez, it's been a long time I had an appraisal like that. But he said, you know, all these glowing things. I said, it's my Jesus. And we started this debate. But if you didn't do this, if you didn't do your work, if you didn't do this. I said, yes, but it's my Jesus. And we had this back and forth. I said, okay, okay, okay. It seems that you've made up your mind. It's your Jesus. I said, it's not. it is my Jesus. It is my Jesus. You go about proving that Jesus is the Christ. So, your transformation needs to impact your community. And how do we do that? Be concerned about your community. I've mentioned that already. Souls are perishing, brothers and sisters. What are you doing about it? It might just be a link to church for somebody. It might just be a let me pray with you. What about for your nation? What about your workplace? Be concerned enough to do something about it. Every Sunday, I see my neighbor washing his Range Rover every Sunday morning. And for the last two years, we've been having this conversation. Whether it's snowing, whether it's raining, he's always cleaning that car every Sunday morning. 
and we have this conversation. Come to church. Yeah, I would come. And I continue. And I, now he's the one who starts it. Going off to church? Yes, I am. All right? And we have this conversation. Do not be tired. One day he is coming here. Amen. Souls are perishing, brothers and sisters. The second thing, we need to be present in our community. Let us feel your presence here. Let the world know that there is a Christian that lives on Drury Lane. Let them know that there is a sister that works in HR. The zealous ones. Finally, let us be encouraging each other in our community. Let's flip the switch a little bit. Rather than always saying, nobody calls me, nobody checks on me. Why don't you call someone actually for a change? Why don't you call your connect leader? I'm a connect leader, so I'm fighting my corner here. Call your connect leader. Ask them too that how is their week going? They just might need it, you know. Call a brother or sister that you've not seen. Call the pastors, call the ministers. Say to somebody, I'd like to pray with you. I heard the testimony of a brother here. Not even the testimony, but what he then later on did. By his own, nobody asked him. He started helping people in this house with their CVs. He would hear a testimony. You would talk about you're struggling with your job. He would reach out to you. He would help you with your CV. We're not saying serving a department here. We're saying you just encouraging people. Then, he would then even take it one step further and say, on Thursday, let's pray and fast together about this your own job situation. Sorry, I didn't mean to point at you, Pastor. At about your own, let's pray. Let's fast together. Wait, let's, let's, come on. It can't just all be about us. Life is, is there's too much to it. There's so many souls. Me, 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 me. That's not why we're going to get a makeover. November 2020. to come to us. My, one of our um, brothers, oh, on my birthday, every year, you know, he would send me a video or WhatsApp to wish me happy birthday. And in 2020, I didn't get one from him, which was very unusual. So rather than do what a lot of us would do, we get angry and upset. And we go, yeah, he didn't remember my birthday. So I called him. He didn't pick up. I WhatsApp him. And he said, oh, he's in hospital. He's in hospital. Sorry, that's why I, didn't, I couldn't call you on your birthday. And, you know, I, I reached out. It's the opposite thing to do. He didn't call. Then you call them. And he said, oh, he's in hospital, you know, fighting this COVID thing and all of that. Little did I know that was going to be our last WhatsApp message. He's resting with the Lord right now. But we're always waiting. There's more to life, more than you. Your makeover is for somebody else. Let's take, get off. It's all about me, me, me. And make an impact and a difference in somebody else's life. Let's rise up to our feet as we pray. <clears throat> Grab a brother or a sister. Grab one person's hand. And just pray for them this morning. Ask that the Lord tells them what he wants them to do for him. Let's just pray. It's the least we can do. We've just learned about making changes in our community. Having an impact in the life of somebody else. Pray for them like you really mean it. This time, pray. Really pray for them. That the Lord reveals to them what he wants them to do in their life. Let's pray for our nation. So much negative news, so much instability. Let's be part of this community that we live in. Let's pray. Let's pray that the Lord uses us to bring about change, to bring about stability. Let's pray. We can't just be Christians and say, yes, it's fine with me. Check my account balance. Everything is good and I'm all right. No! Let's pray. We, we, we are the light bearers and as such, 
We need to show it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. We bless you. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for your word that has come today. Help us, Father, Lord God, to effect change everywhere that we go. Help us to be like Ananias. The souls that are perishing, Father, Lord God, use us as an agent of change. We ourselves help us to be transformed. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And God's people say, please take your seat. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's blessing time. Thank you, Bookie. The details will be up on the screen. If you're paying your tithe, if you're paying your offering, the details are up there. church hands towards our offering basket. Heavenly Lord, Father, we thank you for the grace, for the privilege to be able to give. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for the understanding of what this signifies. Father, Lord God, as we have dipped our hands into our pockets, Father, Lord God, we pray for replenishing, Father, Lord God. A thousand fold, Father, Lord God, we pray that you give to us. We pray, Father, Lord God, for this funds, O Lord God, to be able to use for makeover in the kingdom, Father, Lord God, to transform lives, Father, Lord God, to continue to allow your work, O Lord God, grow in our midst, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, Lord God, for anyone who's not been able to give here today. We pray for a transformation in their lives. We pray for a makeover, O Lord God. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.